Well, so I'm kind of a tough love person, and if I was talking to myself back then, it would probably be a little bit of tough love. It would be to get myself to stop being in denial, because obviously, looking back, I was. I made every excuse in the book for why I was at where I was at, why I was having the production I was having, my relationships, my business, and there was nothing more to it than just being in denial. The way that I lived my life was the results of which I was given. It's based on an effort that you're willing to put in and the rewards are just undeniably 100% the best thing you could ask for. It's what everybody, I assume, wants out of their life to have a better life, to feel better in life. I mean, if you can't wake up and feel good, how does the rest of your life go? Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. In just a moment, you're going to hear a conversation between myself and one of our amazing Fit Father program members, Mr. Nick Snyder. And Nick's amazing, just a genuine guy who really made a profound health transformation in a short period of time. Over the last 100 days or so, Nick has lost over 40 pounds, and he's just about to hit his 44th birthday. So it's incredible the transformation he's made. And what I love about the conversation that Nick and I share is Nick talks about not just the external changes and what it took. We certainly get into some of his routines, but we really highlight just the profound internal shift and the changes to his mindset, to his emotion, how he shows up as a dad, as a small business owner, as a husband. It's just powerful. And I think Nick is really the epitome of a fit father. And he's also a straight, no chaser, no, tell you how it is kind of guy. And he gets very real in this conversation about what it takes, the mindset, and that you got to be honest with yourself and make the change. And Nick's also living proof that it's possible at any age, no matter what you're going through right now, you can get healthy with the right methods. So without further ado, let's get into this conversation with Nick Snyder. All right, Nick, welcome officially to the Fit Father podcast, my friend. Awesome. Thank you. So to kick this convo off, I'd love for you to just give us a little brief about you, your name, your age, where you're from, and a little bit about your family. All right. So my name is Nick Snyder uh, from Northern Illinois and uh, married uh, to my beautiful wife, Stacy, for nine years. And then I have a beautiful daughter. Uh, she's amazing. She is a sophomore in college and uh, they're pretty much the glue that keeps us together. Both of them. And how, how old are you for those listening? I am 43. We'll be 44 next Wednesday. Nice. Well, congratulations. Happy early birthday to you. Um, so this is this almost begs that question. You've made some serious health changes in this last year. What were things like a year ago at your birthday when you were, you know, when you turned 43? Where were you, where was your health at? And like let's start maybe there and then let's talk about that what you've done in this short period of time i mean mindset physical complete 180 from where we're at today um a year ago would have been planning out okay what are we going to do for your birthday we're going to go to a bar honestly um i'm a social drinker um you know i've spent most of my life going to the bar having drinks um, eating bad food, didn't realize how alcohol affected food choices when you have mm -hmm. alcohol and didn't know any of this stuff. But, uh, so a year ago, considerably overweight, um, was probably up to about two thirty. Um, mm -hmm. when I started this, I was at two twenty. Um, but just overall, I mean, looking back, you know, miserable, um, would be a good way to put it. I'm taking naps. Um, every day come home for lunch and just tired, fatigued. Um, and kind of what's crazy about it, the mental aspect is you ask yourself why, and it's pretty blatantly obvious why, but when you're kind of in those, that realm of the, this is your day-to-day -day life, I guess you don't identify with yourself as to you've kind of created this monster, you know, the way you're living your life is the reason that you feel the way you feel and look the way you look. Um, so took kind of a realization to say, I, I would wake up every morning and, and say to myself, like, this is the rest of my life. This is how I'm going to feel. So until I die, I'm just going to wake up, not want to get out of bed, 
not feel good about myself. My joints were achy. I actually got diagnosed with gout in 2017, which can be more of a hereditary thing. I understand that. Um, but I'm sure a lot of my choices probably did not help with, you know, that diagnosis and having that onset of gout. Uh, but that was a pretty big moment for me. I was at a point where I couldn't walk because of it. It was very, it was a very severe onset of gout and it took a while to figure out what it was and get it under control. Um, but at the stage I'm at now, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, my health is good enough that I can get off of a, a daily pill that I take for it and maybe just have some that manages it. If you have an outbreak of gout levels. Yeah. So let me, let's zone in now. Like, I think a lot of guys can relate to where you were. You're stuck in this rut. You kind of just think this is how it is. Overweight, tired, medications, more bad choices that kind of fill the cycle. I want to take a snapshot and hear about where you're at like today. How would you describe your life approaching what's going to be your 44th birthday very soon? How would you describe it today? And then and then we'll spend the rest of the conversation describing how you got there and how you made that shift. But what are things like right now, this week, like how much weight have you lost? What does your body feel like? What is your mood like? I want to get these two snapshots side by side. Uh, I'm down 41 pounds of this morning. Um, extremely excited about that. I, I've really been pushing hard. Um, mentally, it's 100% better. Um, instead of looking at everything pessimistically and negatively, everything is positive and what can be done and, you know, um, work wise, why not me? Why can't I do more? Why can't I be better? Um, instead of just being okay with where it's at, looking to grow, looking to expand. Um, it's just completely different. So, um, it's amazing. Let's talk about how you got there. I mean, you did this in a pretty short amount of time. And for those who are watching this and not just listening, like we'll also, we'll make sure we throw up some photos of like your before and after. Cause what's so amazing is you lost fat, but you also like put on some serious muscle and you could just look like your vitality is so high, but that doesn't happen overnight. What got you to start to take the journey towards losing weight and taking the first steps? Like, how'd you get connected with Fit Father Project? What were you thinking as you started to join? And what was that first period like? So um, what really kind of prompted me to find Fit Father Project was, um, you know, as I was in that rut and just constantly feeling down and low, and again, asking myself why I feel like this and not realizing that it's your lifestyle, it's kind of like you throw up other things like, oh, it's got to be this or that. You, you try to make excuses, I guess, is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of uh, relayed to the fact that, oh, I must have low testosterone. And, you know, I was resigned to that. I'm, I'm reaching out to medical clinics about getting testosterone injections. And this is before I've even had a low testosterone test. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I literally have emails where they're ready to send me to a lab and here's how much it is and we'll give you the injections. And um, it was then that I actually took one minute and I took a step back and I just started Googling uh, ways to improve your testosterone. Again, I don't know. I have low T. How do, how do I improve my low testosterone naturally? And bam, you popped up on YouTube and you started talking about it and ways to improve it. Um, once you did that, you, you said a couple things to me that kind of um, nobody else had said, which was number one, if you go and get testosterone injections in which some people should, you know, they literally have low testosterone. I don't, I know that now. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like falling off a cliff. You don't really come back for that. So um, I was glad that I found you talking about that. And it kind of realigned me to think about, okay, you don't have low testosterone. We got the test. We know that we didn't want to jump off that cliff. Um, but then I started watching your other stuff about how to lose weight in your program. And so I said, Hey, you know, for this cost, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and just try this out and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, you know, I bought the first three months, um, there was like a no money back guarantee. I'm like, okay, what do I got to lose? You know? So yeah. it was, it was awesome. I'm like, I'm in, uh, let's give it a try. And, um, I had actually kind of started 
to do a workout maybe a week before I had found this. But mm -hmm. that workout was what I've always done. And this is probably why I always fail because it's kind of like old school thinking or not realizing the first thing you need to do is kind of lose your body fat, get mm -hmm. your body down to a point and then work on building muscle. Mm -hmm. Well, first thing I started doing is like big muscle exercises, right? You know, I'm squatting and, and doing curls and watching Netflix episodes as I'm doing it because I'm bored out of my mind and it's yeah. the same repetitive thing. And I'm doing it five days a week. You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just doing what I have done when I was 20 years old and uh, I would always fall off. It was that in cardio and cardio for me at that time was like an hour on the treadmill, mm -hmm. which is not sustainable. Knowing yeah. the right mind, you're not going to see the results and you get bored out of your mind no one's going to do it. So mm -hmm. those were the two things that I was kind of doing when I found your program uh, for a week. But then I started with your program. And as soon as I read everything, you know, I got uh, creatine. I supplement with creatine. I got the, the shake stuff, all the nutrients. We went to the grocery. My wife's amazing. She's a nurse. She does a, a little vegan diet on her own. I don't really care for her food, but it's great because she's always been healthy. She's always eaten fish and vegetables, and I'm just kind of the black sheep that hasn't. Mm -hmm. And she's been really helpful with keeping me on track and helping me with my meals that you suggest. And that's kind of how I found your program, and that's where I started with it. What was it like in that first week or so as you're starting to get momentum you read through the meal plan you see the workouts you write a mission statement like what were what what was the what was the nutrition plan you started with what did you settle on as like your beginning nutrition plan when did you eat what did you have kind of the, what's the structure so at first i didn't have the shake so i was doing that egg omelet recipe that you had which is great because i love it and i love everything that can go in it um it was a lot of food a lot of eggs mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so that was pretty difficult, but I wasn't hungry, uh, for sure. Um, and I probably did that for a week until I got the shake. But once I got the shake, I've, that shake is just amazing. So your body really starts to crave it every morning. Mm -hmm. Um, you really look forward to it. And so, um, every morning I start out with what was the omelet is now the shake. And then for lunch, I'll do, I do a very low carb wrap. It's like a 30 carb wrap. Uh, no sugars in it, um, with two or three slices of turkey, mustard, spinach, uh, asparagus, and a slice of pickle. And that's what I do every day for lunch. Uh, I'm a very scheduled person, so my wife always asks me, how, how can you do the same thing? And once your body is getting used to these good foods, it craves these foods. Yeah. So, I mean, I can vary it up here and there, but... That's pretty much my launch. And then I do the quest bar, which mm -hmm. the other thing I'll note about your program is that with the group, the Facebook group, you always are learning. There's so much stuff there. You know, I just came to, to uh, the realization that not all quest bars are on the approved list. So that was one thing I was kind of doing wrong, but the Someone brought it up and I've read the list and now I know that there's certain ones that have sucralose in it. And again, some I never knew about or that it was bad for you. And um, so now I'm on the right quest bars for a little snack, but I do that. And then for uh, dinner, it's just basically, you know, the perfect plate or a salad with protein. And uh, the perfect plate can be chicken. Every now and then I'll do some red meat. Um half plate of veggies, um, which again, the body's craving. So they're all good. And then, um, just a little bit of, of, uh, brown rice or something, a uh, quarter of the plate, just like you said. Um, I will say that that's pretty much my standard when I'm on a schedule, right? So, and that's easy for me when I'm home, when I'm in my home state and everything, it's great. When I first started this program, it was extremely difficult for me because I had three weeks that I was gone. Actually, more than that. One of them was a week and a half. 
So it was probably three and a half weeks. One was a car ride down to Florida and back, and we stopped all these different places. But I was having some momentum. So I'm immediately, what, what do I do? Where do I go? Well, you've already got it set up. It was perfect. So I found your the Travel Fit Father um, program that you got, or the you know the, yeah, the information. Yeah, yeah. And so I just go through the checklist. And I mean, I took a blender, I took a cooler, um, water. Um, I mean, I almost took something to use the bathroom in when we were driving, <laughs> just because, I mean, I'm sure, you know, when you drink that much water, you got to go to the bathroom all the time. But uh, yeah. I mean, it just saved me because I was having progress. And the last thing that I wanted to do was derail it in the early stages I checked out all the hotels, made sure they had a workout place. I took two pairs of 15 pound dumbbells just in case, because that's really all you need to do the MRT, the Apex 10. Yeah. Yeah. And um, while I wasn't perfect, that was the other thing I love about the group. People tell you, look, if you're not absolutely perfect, just get back on the horse the next day and don't feel guilty about it, you know? Do what you can. I went to Memphis. I wasn't not going to try, you know, their their ribs, their barbecues, what they're famous mm -hmm. for. But, you know, a lot of people said, stay away from the sauces, do a dry rub. So there were things that the group really provides that I feel like helped in those moments that I couldn't be perfect. And it probably really helped me su sustain some success. Yeah. I mean, spot on everything you said, I think like the things I really want to emphasize for those listening as like key principles that are screaming through is you got super consistent with your nutrition, at least those first two meals, right? Cause that's like consistent momentum. You had more variety over dinner, but you used the perfect plate concept. And we have videos on this podcast on this. And of course, in the program, you're doing that. Um, you had a go-to snack with the quest bars, but what I really love about your story is, is that where there's a will, there's a way. And when you were seeing progress, you had this will to, which I think even strengthened you even further. Cause when you went on that trip and you committed to bringing the couple things you needed, you're like strengthening your commitment even deeper. So I'm wondering, Nick, when you wrote your initial mission statement, what were some of the deep reasons why this was important to you at this time in life? Like when you were looking at some of those areas of your life, where did that will come from? Cause a lot of guys struggle with this initial motivation. What did yours do when you wrote that mission statement? Well, I mean, I realize I'm proud. Well, I could be one of the younger people, you know, low 40s. It's fit father over 40. But what really came to me is my wife, my daughter, my family, how I was feeling before this program. And I'm asking myself, how do I live the rest of my life when I feel the way that I feel? Like, mm -hmm. you just don't have the mental drive, like it, it, if it's a drain, you know, and I want a good life. The rest of the life that I have here, I want a good life and I want a good life with my wife and my daughter. And I want to be an example to them. And, uh, I want it free of disease. You know, when I reflect back on whether it's gout or family history, I've got diabetes in my fam family. Um, I don't want diabetes. I don't want underlying disease and things that could come on based on the way that I was living my life. Um, I want to enjoy the time and I, I want to travel and I want to see my daughter grow up. I want to um, be a grandfather. Um, I want these things and the path that I, I was on and I was on for the majority of my life after 20s was not sustainable. I've been lucky to this point uh, that I, you know, haven't had something else. Mm -hmm. So count my blessings and it's time to move on. It's time yeah. to, to make my life how I want it. And then you got to work because it's been, you know, you're about a little over, like around over a hundred days in now, I think if I'm counting, like, you know, give or take some, but What's it been like with your body and your exercise? You know, I have this visual of you basically starting out in your garage with the old curl bar, doing some barbell squats, watching Netflix. And then the fit father exercise is much different. It's structured. It's a little more scientific. And quite frankly, it's harder than that. What, what's it been like exploring your body and with the workouts in particular, what's the experience been like with the MRTs? 
Well, at first you realize just how far out of shape you are. Um, you realize how difficult things have gotten. Um, you know, the, the Apex 10 out of the gate, I'm sure everybody does it. And I've done it recently with the, uh, the Great Destroyer. You're always kind of underestimate what it's going to be. And so, you know, I think out of the gate, I was thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this with 20-pound dumbbells and first time ever doing it. No way. There's just no way. So I think I might have started with 10, and it was grueling. You get halfway through it, three-quarters of the way through it, and you're questioning if you can get it done. Mm -hmm. But you just sustain. You push through. Take the extra time if you need it between uh, uh, sets. Mm -hmm. And you just make it happen. But I'll tell you what, if you do one, the second one is that much easier. And then the third one's that much easier. And then if, even when you go to the next weight, you know it's going to be harder. But it's never as hard as the first time you do it. You, It's just the mountain you have to get over. But once you get over it, your body starts uh, responding, especially with the nutrition. You're fueling your body. To exactly what it needs and you're eliminating everything it doesn't need and so by doing that i mean it just your body responds so amazingly i feel so strong now i'm excited to do the workouts even though i know they're going to be grueling you start wanting i said it the other day in the group you start looking for the burn where before yeah. it was like oh i'm going to be so sore now you start looking for the burn and you yeah. start craving it so, I mean, the MRT stuff's awesome. Obviously, the muscle building stuff's great because, uh, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at and looking to get to. Yeah. I mean, you packed on a great amount of muscle while losing the fat, which is really impressive. And what I love what you said is there's this switch that kind of flips in your mind where you're the guy that avoids discomfort beforehand. And is it kind of like you're fine with the discomfort of not being happy with your life and your feeling to a man that now is like looking for challenge and is getting into an expansive mindset. And I think that's the real thing, right? Like wh whether you're over the hill or you're taking the hill, it's that mentality. And like exercise is one of the greatest vehicles for helping us do that. When Because when you nail and kick ass at your MRT, you wake up the next day and you're the kind of person that wants to go even harder at work to be a better you know, spouse and all these things. Like speaking to that, how this, this mentality is translated to all the different areas of your life. Yeah, it's 100% true and it's on both it's the physical and the mental side both of those things um at one point you know you're shying away from uh these hardships and on the other side once you kind of cross it what's next what else can i do physical mentally emotionally how can i be better at this how can i be better at that it just it evolves how do you be how do you be a better friend everything a friend, a neighbor, um, a husband, a father. So mentally, emotionally, physically, on the other side, which, you know, anybody that's looking for this, that's what they're looking to achieve. And it, it's all right there. All you got to do is like implement the system. And I mean, it, it's just great. It, it's crazy to think that three months ago where I was at compared yeah. to today. I mean, Nick, guy, guys go three decades in this in the situation you were at. But I mean, it's what's amazing is that's easy to do, but it's also like when you look back from your vantage point, you did this in three months. I mean, you totally changed your life around in three months and you're approaching this new year with new health. Like, I'm just so excited for you and your family and like what you're going to be able to create with that. So that kind of, my next question for you is like, what's, what's the future have in store for you with your progression with your health? What are some of your goals and maybe some things you're looking uh, ahead to accomplish and experience next year? Well, one of the biggest thing, I mean, uh, the closest goal would be getting into OSM. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to start string training. I got maybe five, six more pounds. I want to drop nice. uh, and then get into that. Um, and, I mean, that's, that's kind of where I came from when I was young, you know, I was always yeah. lifting heavy weights and stuff like that. So I'd like to get back to that. Um, maintain being healthy, gain muscle, um, continue to grow, to be better husband, father, 
you know, all the things that we just mentioned work wise. Um, I've got basically a renewed vigor for figuring out how to have a bigger business, a better business, a more lucrative business. Um, you know, how to progress with it instead of just being stagnant and ho-hum, it's another day. Let's go seize the day. Let's, why not me? Why, why not make something bigger? Why can't it be? Um, and there's no reason. The only thing stopping me is me. And, uh, I've been in the way for a while now. It's very clear to me that that energy is gone though. I mean, there's, there's a new feel about you, my friend. That is very, that is very clear. And it warm it, and it warms my heart so much. Like I, I just like, I, I get such blessing from being on these conversations because little did I know when I was designing this fitness programming that I was hoping to lose weight, that I would end up having a conversation with you, Nick, where I get to like, look you in the eyes and, and feel the life you created for yourself and your family. It's priceless. I'm just so happy for you. And, and I'm so proud of you because you put in the work and you know, you're here because of that. And it's amazing. So I want to conclude this with a question. And that's like looking back, if you could have given yourself some advice a couple years ago when you were in the rut on how to get out, or maybe some advice you even have for new guys in the brotherhood groups um, that, that may see what you're, you're doing and, and, and like take inspiration. Like, what would you say to someone or yourself in the early stages of this thing? Well, so I'm kind of a tough love person. And if I was talking to myself back then, it would probably be a little bit of tough love. It would be to get myself to stop being in denial. Because obviously, looking back, I was. I made every excuse in the book uh, for why I was at where I was at, why I was having the production I was having, um, my relationships, my business. Um, and there was nothing more to it than just being in denial. The way that I lived my life was the results of which I was given. So it's based on an effort that you're willing to put in. And the rewards are just undeniably 100% the best thing you could ask for. It's what everybody, I assume, wants out of their life to have a better life, to feel better in life. I mean, if you can't wake up and feel good, how does the rest of your life go? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the building blocks to everything. And advice to anybody else that's, you know, looking to do it or going through it, you know, just be honest with yourself about what you want. Focus on how do you want your life to be? It's obtainable, but be honest with yourself what you want out of life. And if, if that's more than what you're doing today, then you need to go get it done. This system, if you plug into the system and simply follow it, there's so many guys that are just doing the nutrition. The nutrition is 80%. All you got to do is stop eating the wrong foods and eat them at the right times, eat the right food, the right times. And I would think that a so many people would see huge gains. I saw some guy who was, uh, he was over 300 pounds and he said he couldn't walk a hundred yards. He didn't know how he was going to do anything. And he just started doing the nutrition. And then he did a walk down the street and this guy's walking over a mile now. And so when you put out an excuse, know that you're putting out an excuse, which that's all it is. You're in denial. <laughs> I again, a little tough love here, but yeah. you need to focus on what you want. It is achievable. And it if you just follow simple steps, it's not that difficult. You just got to put in the work. Yeah, Nick. You absolutely nailed it. I mean, it it is that, right? It's getting clear and honest with ourselves, getting a system that's simple you can follow, building some momentum. And being around like-minded people that can encourage you and you can draw inspiration from that you can troubleshoot with and share wins, successes and, and challenges with like, that's the recipe. And, and that's, you work the recipe. And, and, and I, I want to say this too, in, in closing, I'm damn excited to see you on OSM next year. Like I'm excited for your next phase. It's just a special thing to be able to go through this first phase and, and then recreate a whole new chapter. And, and when you're, when you're deadlifting hundreds of pounds in your garage, I want to have you back on here. We'll talk about that too. That sounds awesome. All right, Nick. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate you so much. And uh, thank you for being a fit father. You bet. Thank you. Thank you.